Hi, I'm Jeff Beveridge, the founder of Trident Proposal Management. And I'm Kathy Borkowski, Vice President for Trident Proposals. In this training video, we're going to go over the roles and responsibilities that you need to have in place for any government proposal that you propose on. Now, we're not saying that each one of these roles is a different person. And we understand that if you're a small business, you might be a whole bunch of these. You might be wearing every hat on this list. The point is, is that you need to take on the responsibilities and know when the role is important for the process. So, Kathy, why don't you kick us off with Capture Manager. The Capture Manager is probably the person that's going to know this, this RFP inside and out long before it ever comes out. And while they're focused on talking to the client, um, prepping it so that the right sort of information is going towards them, the important part in the proposal process is this is the guy that knows what wind themes you should be developing. They should be helping as an advisor to the entire proposal process. Yeah, the capture manager is going to be an advisor that is actually a reviewer of the documents. He's giving you great insight into how to write different sections. And he's part of the proposal process, but he's not in charge of the pro proposal process. That's a different role. That's the proposal manager, the key role of a proposal process. Now, Kathy, you've managed a whole bunch of these proposals. Talk to me about what is your responsibilities when you manage a proposal? The biggest thing to remember as proposal manager is you are, in, this is your document. It's not somebody else's and you're just helping facilitate it. It is your baby. So the more you get your team to deliver the exact document that you want and that your reviewers agree with, the better. In fact, even the reviewers are on your team. They're making your document better. Yeah, she's talking about a proposal mindset. It's the mindset that you are in charge. You've got to get this thing out the door, usually in 30 days, and you've got to tell everyone what to do, when to do it, how to do it, to get the best possible document. Because, you know, most of the time, it's your job and your staff's job on the line. Now, that leads us to the proposal manager's best friend, the proposal coordinator. Kathy, right. how do you use proposal coordinators? So, in this is sometimes proposal manager, proposal coordinator are going to be the same person, but a lot of the times there's so much to juggle as a manager. You want someone to take the task management and event creation and all that stuff off your plate. So the proposal coordinator is that person. Hey, Jeff, did you do what you said you were going to do yesterday? Great. And then they'll let the proposal manager know or they'll facilitate all of this information getting to the proposal manager. Yeah, the idea of dividing these roles is so the proposal manager can focus on what's important and the coordinator can take care of the details. Granted, for a small business, it's usually the same person. Now, you're, now we're getting into roles that actually produce the document. And the first one is a volume lead. If you're going after a bigger contract, you're going to, probably going to have a fairly technical, fairly lengthy technical document that you're going to have to write. And for almost every proposal, you're going to have to write a cost volume as well. And that means you're going to coordinate different writers and you're going to have to bring them together to produce the entire document. That requires a boss, a book boss, a volume lead, someone that's going to make sure everyone that's writing gets it together and gets it into a coherent document. Kathy, do you have any tips for the volume lead? So, well, I've seen a lot of big failures in that. Like sometimes proposal managers will be like, I have three technical writers. He's in charge of these different parts of just the PWS. Well, if you don't have somebody sitting on top of that process to make sure everyone's giving the right type of feedback, similar sort of stuff, then it turns into kind of a hot mess. So my biggest tip is have somebody sitting on top of the volume that has a pretty good idea of the whole thing, but that also is able to take a lot of different inputs and make it into one coherent structured document. Again, we're talking about a fairly lengthy tech volume that has different sections with different writers. Now let's talk about those writers and the SMEs that give them data. So Kathy, I know that you've had to coordinate and help Book Boss with lots and lots of writers. What are the things that a good writer does? A good writer, the first thing a good writer does is listen to the volume lead. But then, doesn't that put back on the volume lead to make sure you're giving me good guidance? Now, there's a million ways to write anything. And as a writer, if you give me an outline and you tell me, okay, first I want to know, uh, tell me how to do this thing, then give me an example. Then as a good writer, I've done that. I've said, these are the steps to the process. Here's an example of where we've done it in the past. And I make sure I'm turning everything into you on time because sometimes I get busy. Yeah, for sure. You might have a day job. Yeah. And the good writer is also going to have access to SMEs. These are people with specific information about whatever the topic is. Sometimes the writer is the SME and sometimes you are in a fortunate situation where the SME has to be delivering to the customer and the writer is actually pulling that information from the subject matter expert, the SME, and putting it in the document. 
Now, once you've got your writers handled, there's one critical unsung hero to the entire process, and that's the technical editor. Now, the technical editor is something that you, the role you've had and the role that you use religiously in all your proposals. What is that person doing? They're basically checking one voice. Does the whole document read like one person wrote it or like 24 people wrote it? And then grammar and acronyms and all the small little details that really make a document sing. And I've actually found a lot of success, Jeff, in having the technical editor in the process twice. So once in sort of the rough draft stage and once right before we're ready to deliver that final product to the reviewers or to the client. Yeah, I remember when you brought that into our best practice because what I noticed immediately was we were getting a review process that was actually more effective because all those grammar er errors and the issues with one voicing, that actually hangs reviewers up. They stop reviewing the content and they start like getting hung up on these details. So if you get that tech editor in early, it really is, is super helpful. Now we're going to run through the next four pretty quickly. The first one is, or the next one is compliance. Compliance is a little bit like tech editor. They come in just when you need them to do a specific job. The role of the compliance person is to make sure that you are answering the government's questions using the formats and fonts and every other formatting issue that the government specifies. That you're doing it in the order the government is requiring and finally that you're actually answering the question in a way that's relevant and worthwhile, like worth reading. That compliance person ideally is always someone that's not involved in the proposal process. It's sometimes better just to hire somebody out to do compliance and to have those fresh set of eyes than to have the person that was part of the writing or has been reviewing the document over and over again do compliance. Compliance is a role, even as a small business, you want to have that separate. That's a really good point. So compliance, having that guy, he has saved my bacon so many times because I've had writers saying, no, no, I put everything in there. He goes through and actually grades us just like the government would grade us and we find these giant gaping holes just because like we didn't use the right sort of language from the PWS so it's not easy to find. Compliance, hands down, the unsung hero of a proposal probably. Without a doubt. So the next person in your team and a very important part of it is your cost lead. Your cost lead is going to use the directions from the government to produce the cost proposal, the cost volume. The cost volume needs to be priced to win. You want to make sure that your pricing, either at market or just slightly below everyone else's um, submissions, to make sure that you are in the running to win in the first place. That's a good point. And just a quick note for the newbies out there, there's a lot of places you can get data on what sort of prices are out there. There's usaspending.gov, there's fpds.gov. Just do a little research, do a little homework. Yeah, for sure. Make sure your cost lead knows how to do that research as well. And the last two is your subcontracts and your contracts lead. Again, these are maybe all part of the proposal manager role for a small business. But if you can, you can have somebody take care of any subcontracting you're doing. Where you're a prime contractor and you have teammates, they need teaming agreements, they need non-disclosure agreements, and there's just other contractual stuff and negotiations that has to happen. The contracts person is a person that leads that interface with the government. So not only is that person going to make sure that we're contractually accurate in how we propose, but once you win, he's the one that's going to lead the negotiation with the government to get you started. That's great. So what Jeff basically is getting at is there's a million different roles for all of these proposals. And the key is not to have 12 people on your proposal team, but to make sure you've covered it all and that you've thought through the process that you're going to be implementing. We're trying to proposal management. Play to win your next government contract. And subscribe to our channel for more information that will help you do that winning.